Thanks for tuning in. Welcome to Adirang Newsbreak, live from Seoul. I'm Han Daun. The interim leader of the main opposition Minju Party of Korea has been briefing lawmakers on his party's priorities. It's the second in a series of addresses from the major parties this week. We begin with parliamentary correspondent Shin Zemin. The main talking point, once again, is the economy. In his first address to parliament on Tuesday, Kim Jong-in, the interim leader of main opposition Minju Party of Korea, said that the country's economic fundamentals should change to support economic democratization, a drive to ease the wealth gap between the rich and the poor. The five-term proportional representative said his party's presidential candidate will be someone who takes on the responsibility of making Korean people's livelihoods better. He also addressed the issue of financial irregularities at Korea's family-controlled conglomerates, also known as Chebol. Kim said he would immediately push to strengthen oversight of the conglomerates to prevent financial abuses and abuses of power. Kim also weighed in on an ongoing debate over whether to revise the Constitution. He advocated for the establishment of a special committee to look into the matter, which he described as inevitable. Kim also touched on the issue of inter-Korean relations. He emphasized the need to counter any threats coming from North Korea by boosting national security. He also proposed holding an inter-Korean parliamentary level meeting to help ease the current tensions between the two Koreas. Shin Zemin, Arirang News. The ruling Senori Party has called for a supplementary budget of a significant size this year. Ruling party officials ask the government to seriously consider allocating extra funds for youth job creation and for workers who might be affected by the government-led restructuring of ailing industries. Government officials said they understood the need for an extra budget and were looking into possible measures. The amount is yet to be decided. North Korea appears to be showing signs of missile launch preparations yet again. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff has confirmed this afternoon a missile has been deployed to the East Sea, but there are no signs of an immediate launch. The South Korean military says it's keeping a close eye on the missile's movements. Tokyo has reportedly ordered its self-defense forces to intercept the missile if it falls in Japanese territory. Kyoto News Agency reports Japan has deployed Aegis destroyers to the East Sea and has packed three missiles on standby to intercept the missile in the event of a launch. The missile is believed to be a mid-range Busudan, which has a range of up to 4,000 kilometers, putting the U.S. territory of Guam within reach. North Korea has tested four Musudan missiles this year, and all have ended in failure. A local court is hearing the case of 13 defectors who North Korea claims were abducted by the South Korean government. The hearing was requested by an association of progressive law, uh, lawyers to determine if there is any truth to North Korea's claim. It's the first time a local court has held a hearing on the legality of the government's temporary protection of North Korea defectors. This morning, uh, uh, South Korea's National Intelligence Service decided to continue a government protection of the 13 defectors instead of sending them to a state-run resettlement facility. The decision was made for security purposes as the high-profile case could be used as propaganda in North Korea. The group, who had worked in a Pyongyang-run restaurant in Beijing, fled to South Korea in April. North Korea insists the South Korean government kidnapped them and has been demanding their swift return. Seoul has reiterated the defectors came of their own free will. Moving on to the investigation into the country's fifth largest conglomerate, Seoul prosecutors are looking into whether Latte Group's business units were involved in dubious transactions involving paper companies to create slush funds. Kim min reports. Latte Group has been found to have engaged in suspicious transactions in Vietnam involving a paper company. In 2014, Lotte invested some 400 million U.S. dollars to establish Lotte Center Hanoi, a 65-story complex with a five-star hotel and apartments, a department store and offices. While the complex was being built, Lotte Asset Development, the group's property development arm, 
bought a paper company named Coralis in Luxembourg for about $60 million. The purchase gave the business unit the right to use and develop the land on which the complex was built. Later, Lotte Shopping and Hotel Lotte each bought 45 percent of the shares of the paper company, leaving Lotte Asset Development with just 10 percent. The combined book value of the three unit shares is roughly 100 million. But last year, the paper company posted a net loss of about $50 million, and Lotte was criticized for going ahead with the business project while bearing the financial burden. Prosecutors are looking into whether Lotte Group used a special purpose company to inflate the losses and whether it used the extra money to set up slush funds for the owner family. Lotte Group has brushed off allegations, saying that SPCs are set up to help the parent company comply with local regulations when it's involved in overseas investment and development projects. Kim Minji, Arirang News. And that's all from me. Keep it tuned to Arirang for more global and domestic news throughout the day. Thank you for watching.